Here is the 2024 Honda Passport Elite all-wheel drive in sonic gray pearl over black interior. Three different trims to option with the Trail Sport. It's not going to increase anything for clearance, but it's going to have that off-roadsy style. The black edition is going to be the top trim. Is this going to be better than the competition? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm going to go over the pros and cons, the problem that I have, and those comparable rivals. In the front starts with LED headlights and daytime runnings. That's standard the fog lights that's led only come on the black edition the grille configuration is going to be unique to the trail sport the same thing for the black edition getting the badging on the lower and the gloss black elements will go into the headlight assembly and it's going to have a similar stance to the ridge line the lower is going to get the matte black and 8.1 inches of ground clearance which if you're thinking about a vehicle that can do a little bit more capabilities the Pilot, if you tick the box for the Trail Sport, it's at 8.3 inches. All trims will receive the same 3.5 liter V6, producing 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque paired to a nine-speed automatic transmission, achieving 19 MPGs for the city, 24 MPGs for the highway. Now, a difference between this and the Pilot is you're going to get a 10-speed automatic transmission. You're going to get one MPG more for the all-wheel drive variant for your highway, and it's going to have five horsepower more also. So just something to take in consideration if you're looking to maybe jump into that tier because it's only a few thousand dollar difference. All trims but the Trail Sport will get a 20-inch wheel configuration. So if you go to the base, it's going to be a silver. The Trail Sport is an 18-inch with all-terrain tires. And because we have the black edition, it only makes sense to have the gloss black 20-inch wheel with the side view mirror caps blacked out, the roof rails that are raised. And this is going to be around 11 inches shorter than the Pilot, but it's only a two-seat configuration. Same towing capacity of 5,000 pounds, and we have the IVTM4, which is the inter Intelligent Variable Traction Management System for the all-wheel drive, which distributes torque between each wheel to make it a little bit easier for your maneuverabilities. I like how it has a rugged profile stance, even on the Black Edition, especially with this Sonic Gray Pearl. Going against competition like Toyota and Kia, this is going to be a little bit more capable in the class because of the length that it's at. This almost pushes you in to a Toyota Highlander, which is a third row variant, but it's going to be super tight for the third row. This has nearly the same cargo capacity as that and the, and the same towing configuration. The styling for the rear is going to mimic the Acura RDX, especially with the lower exhaust pipes that come outwards and it looks super aggressive. LED taillights is going to be standard with blackout badging with reverse sensors and a reverse camera. There is no option for a 360 degree reverse camera, which starts with a con for me because because when you go into the black edition, if you go for a pilot and you go up to the touring, you'll get a 360 degree reverse camera. Heck, even the trail sport will have a trail camera as well. So why don't they implement that in this? Because maybe I don't want a third row. And then if you're thinking about rival perspective, like the new Hyundai Santa Fe, that's a third row variant and it's nearly the same size as this. Towing capabilities will decrease by 500 pounds and it is a turbocharge with the nine speed dual wet clutch setup, but they also offer a hybrid powertrain, whereas here you're getting the cylinder management system, which will deactivate cylinders to get better MPGs. But when I'm thinking naturally aspirated V6, that's the least of my worries because I want longevity. I don't want cylinders to cut on and off. Get a power lift gate. It's gonna start off at 40.2 cubic feet of storage. Get a little storage bin here, another one right here with 12 volt charger underneath the floor. Get some storage, pull this up, and you got your spare tire with a little bit more storage capacity. And you can fold down the second row in the back at a 60 40 split, maxing cargo to 77.7 .7 cubic feet. Ten-way power seat adjustment is standard, as well as heated front seats. Four-way power seat adjustment for the passenger. Black edition, you're going to get the red contrast stitch. Because of the black edition, it's the only trim that gets ventilated front seats. 
with memory for the driver. Headroom for the passport and leg room. Because this is the black edition, you're going to get with 10 speakers that's going to be throughout with a subwoofer included instead of 215 watts. All trims receive infotainment. Navigation comes on the Trail Sport first. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Wi-Fi hotspot is only on this trim. Honda Link is on all trims. Put it into reverse and you get a reverse camera that will show trajectory for the rear. And you can change different camera layouts, even lining it up for the tow. Tri climate control settings is standard with a tray of storage with a 12 volt, two USB with a standard wireless charging pad. And this center cluster area has been cleaned up. So it maximizes space, making it a little bit more roomy. The key fob for the passport. It's gonna be sporty, opens up. It's a pretty deep storage pocket with a pin holder. Leather wrap steering wheel is standard. Heated, perforated, multi-function paddle shifts. The gauge cluster can go through an array of information for the driver, including the turn-by-turn -turn navigation, your sound, and different settings for the driver. The dash and the door panel configure it together. You get the blind spot monitoring, gloss black materials, even on the door handles, one touch up and down for the front windows, and it's gonna be a little bit more sporty with two tiers of storage with the auto dimming rear view mirror, a moonroof, and another mirror here for your sunglass holder to see in the back. For the back seat of the Passport, Headroom, leg room, storage, storage, third climate control setting, two USB ports, 12 volt. Heated rear seats is only on this trim. Cup holders with an armrest that folds up. Sunshades, the door is gonna get the gloss black, but it's going to strip out the gloss black pattern that goes here with two cup holders and a storage in the lower, and it's gonna be a little bit more sporty in a large grab handle sliding into the center. The floor is more or less flat, so feet space isn't gonna be an issue even though this kind of pushes out, but leg and shoulder space is going to be good as well. And the same thing for headroom, and you can also adjust these seats back so you can recline. I would remove this making it a four seater, unfortunately, so that way it's not bothering the person behind the driver. 280 horsepower with 262 pound feet of torque, rework center cluster. You sit up similar to the Ridgeline. It's pretty much the same setup, even for the front, except this is an SUV, which because they've kept copied so much of the similarities of the Ridgeline, kind of wish that they put that little palm holder in front of the infotainment screen. As for power, naturally aspirated V6, which means you can get up to speed fine. The windows are large. I'm not so into the way you sit upright in this because I feel like I'm sitting over the dash, over the door panels. It just has a different feel to it even if you put the seat in the lowest seating position. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros, I like that we got the rework center cluster because it does clean up and feel a lot more airy throughout the interior of the cabin. You get a lot of cargo capacity. Towing is good, you got 5,000 pounds. Clearance is over eight inches. Standard leather seats, standard LED headlights and daytime runnings. The con though, you have to go to the black edition in order to get fog lights. Inside, you get a lot of amenities too because you're getting standard power seat adjustment, heated front seats, but for the second row and ventilated seats, you have to go up to the top tier, which is the black edition. You're going to hear the exhaust filter in. When you're in the black edition, you also have acoustic side windows, not just the front windows, which is the only trim that offers it. 20 inch wheels, it drives very smooth. Not a huge fan of the gauge cluster layout either. I kind of wish that they went pilot design with it and maybe changed up some of the configuration of the dash layout because even though this has been refreshed, it just doesn't look as refreshed as the Pilot. You're not going to be able to option a Bose speaker system here, only a 10 speaker option with over 500 watts, but that's only on the Black Edition. Going against comparable rivals, it does 
a lot more capabilities than Toyota, than Kia and Hyundai. Even if you're thinking about the new Hyundai Santa Fe, that's going to be a little bit longer than this. This is going to have a little bit more capabilities. You will lose a third row, but that's also why they option a pilot. You're getting the nine speed automatic transmission. Kind of wish you got the 10 speed and maybe upgraded the horsepower so it would be right on par with the pilot. But overall, I mean, it has good value in the sense of what you're getting as a package because you can get this fully loaded under 50 grand. It's hard to do that nowadays with SUVs. Braking on the vehicle, it doesn't feel very heavy. So that is a good thing. Turn radius at more or less a stop point. It's gonna be about two lanes. Let's rock and roll. Now it does feel a little heavy at the beginning and that's because of the cylinder management system which I told you that's the problem that I have ultimately because I'm thinking longevity when I go into Honda which that can be something that questions the longevity. Another con that I have is the firmness of the seats. I'm in the black edition and I feel like I'm more in a truck and this is a unibody construction so I kind of want it to be a lot more smooth than a body on frame setup but they're not doing that with the cushions for the interior. The infotainment screen goes forward, which it doesn't necessarily get a lot of glare because they have this little gloss black, but then there's gloss black elements pretty much found throughout. So it's gonna be a cleaning headache with a Garmin system and the system does have a little bit of glitch, which when I'm thinking this is a 24 model, I would like it to be a little bit more seamless, but this is also found in pretty much every vehicle nowadays. They've thrown in so much new technology that the vehicles are not as capable. As for maneuverability, you can get in and out. The steering is light. It does have a little bit of play into it, which is not too bad. But overall, I think it's going to be a good daily driven vehicle. Going onto the interstate, you will hear more road noise filter in, even with the acoustic side windows. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Ocean Honda for giving us this 2024 Honda Passport Black Edition for our car review.